G'day everyone, my name is Ben, welcome back to Medieval Mayhem. Today we're looking at the Anglo-Saxon peasant. Peasants represented probably a good kind of 95% of the population of Anglo-Saxon England. And what did they wear? Well, we do know a great deal about this. There's phenomenal amounts of information in Byzantine uh, iconography, in French or Carolingian iconography, as well as Anglo-Saxon iconography. There's a lot of descriptions. We also have the Bayeux Tapestry, and that's also backed up by physical evidence that we've garnered from Scandinavia. So we know, based on all of this evidence, that uh, if you like fashion, what men wore throughout uh, Europe at this time, during the 900s and the 1000s, the 10th and 11th centuries, was basically the same. So let's take a great look. All right, so we're gonna start off with undergarments. And um, this is the first time I've ever been wearing my underwear in public. All right, um, we're looking at linen. So uh, just a general kind of coarse, unprocessed linen uh, would be what we're wearing. Um, I guess for the upper classes, they might be dyed, but certainly for the peasants, probably not. Uh, we have a long, very simple tunic, that, and tunic length seemed to vary a lot in this sort of time. It could be anything from sort of mid-thigh down to sort of knee length, and that's backed up with what's called berets. Berets are like uh, very long boxer shorts that go down to about your knees or slightly longer, and we tend to see this a great deal. On top of this, we're going to wear single-legged hosen uh, made from wool. This could have been quite close fitting, although some of the manuscripts and some of the iconography tends to suggest it was a little bit looser. But trousers hadn't really been a thing at this time. We do know, of course, about the Thorsberg trousers, um, but it doesn't appear they were very common at all. Uh, if, if you look at the, uh, the manuscripts and the iconography, certainly everyone seems to be wearing just about the same thing. So braids and single leg hosen. So hose and what I'm referring to here is, is what we're wearing. So that's um, basically a long kind of stocking kind of thing that um, you wore on each side and they attach directly to the braids. There would have been of course some cultural and regional variations on this, but basically that's what we're talking about. Okay, so now we have another tunic. This one's made from wool and this is just worn on top of my uh, undergarments. Same kind of length, same kind of sleeves. Um, I haven't put any embroidery or any kind of trimmings on this particular one. Um, now I'm gonna support this with a narrow leather belt. Uh, the belts that I wear are approximately 20 millimeters wide and that's backed up by extensive amounts of archeological evidence of belt buckles that we find all over the place throughout Europe from this time period. On the belt, we have a pouch uh, and a Sayax knife. Again, Sayaxes are not just a, a Viking kind of thing um, and certainly not just an Anglo-Saxon thing. They're kind of throughout the whole of Europe and they were used from kind of the post-Roman period right through to the medieval period. We even see them in the Majowski Bible. I'm also wearing a leather costral with my water bottle and I have a linen coif on my head. We'll talk about the pouch and pouch contents in another video, but certainly a lot of people would have had pouches, although a lot of people wouldn't. If you were just working in the fields, then you're probably not walk working very far from home, so there may not be a lot of need for one. Certainly though, if you're a fjordsman, as in a militiaman, then having a pouch with stuff in it that's going to help you get through a few days makes a lot of sense. A straw hat would be quite common during summer, and we also see that in the iconography. In the cooler months, we're going to wear a hood. This one's based on a Scandinavian find. In the colder months, we could certainly wear a cloak. This one is a circular cloak, and it's lined with linen. Or, of course, you could wear a rectangular version. You could do these cloaks up with a brooch. That's how you pronounce them to my American and Canadian friends. Brooches, not brooch. <laughs> And um, this particular one is a penannular brooch. Penannular is a Latin word, or, or two words, pen being almost an annular meaning circular. You could of course wear a disc brooch or an annular brooch. Um, 
there's a whole bunch of different variations there but everyone was wearing these penannula brooches and we know that from the absolutely phenomenal amount of finds we we have from different battlefields and all over the place now in a, as a fjordsman we would have a nasal helmet much like this one uh, now this one is is paneled so it's made from four panels that are held together with these strips and they are riveted this is incredibly strong so this is a 16 gauge helmet but um, i've tested these and they just they take so much of a beating it's hilarious um like you just can't break them an axe definitely i just put tuck this into the waistband of my belt uh, axes and say axes would have been very common weapons a shield uh, we know from laws in anglo-saxon laws and scandinavian laws that having a shield and a helmet was uh, a requirement and all anglo-saxon men would have been part of the militia and they all would have been required to do uh, a number of days about 40 days of service each year finally we have a spear and uh, again a very common weapon fantastic for standoff offense and defense and uh, a spear in the hands of someone who has a good idea how to use it uh, is an incredibly devastating weapon and will beat most other weapons uh, of the time period like things like um, swords axes etc uh, a spear is a, by far the most superior weapon the only one that i can really think of is going to beat a spear is going to be an arrow um, simply because of the range distance Alrighty guys, so this is my impression of an Anglo-Saxon, but also this could be just as good for um, someone who's a Viking or a Carolingian or perhaps even a Norman. Um, but let me know your thoughts in the comments below, I'd love to hear them. I hope you've had a fantastic new year. Uh, my name is Ben from Medieval Mayhem. Please like, subscribe and share and I will catch you in my next video.